we've dropped like 1.8 million euros thus far. We've got one point and find ourselves in sixth place. And we got a lot of transfer news to catch up on. So this is going to be a transfer only episode and like catching up on some stuff. So here goes. All right, my friends, welcome back in. It's episode 106. Thank you so much. If you're watching episode 106, you're a legend. We got a nice little community here. I love the comments. I apologize I wasn't able to get to all the comments from the last like couple episodes. Like I said, I think last week I was going to be kind of busy. It, I'm back and, you know, not as busy. So I'll hopefully be able to keep up moving forward. I have a whole um, pretty much page worth of notes, you know, line by line. It's not like the whole doesn't cover the whole width of the page but kind of like bullet points to go through so i told you we only had one point we do eh, we, we have two games in hand but even with that right if we win both games we're only going to be at best second place waterford currently top of the table 3-0 and 0 with a plus five goal differential under the helm of daryl mcmahon 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 mm. um doesn't like me. Yeah, we've had some beef, you know, when he was with Shamrock and then Dundalk. So, you know, but I mean, props to him. They've won their first three games. Now who they played? Bohemian, Dundalk, and UCD. You know, pretty good teams last season. So, hey, you know, it's a new season in the SSE Airtricity Premier League. Yeah. Board confidence currently. 50%. Well, we just, we've just played one game, boys and girls. Relax. Um, as you can... Oh, no, you can't tell, right? So, you know how we used to get UCD in all of our, our cup games? Now it's Dundalk. We got Dundalk in the EA Sports Cup, and we just played them in the Leinster Senior Cup. Yeah, we played Dundalk and beat them, and now we get to take on St. Paul's Artane. Let me know if you are a viewer from Ireland, if you know anything about St. Paul's Artane. Amateur team... I just think it's funny. We had to, we had to get, get through Dundalk to play the mighty Artanes. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we've dropped, I mean, a, a good bit of coin, you, you could say. Um, we've used some of our transfer budget. Let me just kind of, I, I, I'm going to look over here at my other screen and then kind of hop back and forth, so kind of bear with me. Um, our transfer revenue retained is up to 70%. Um... Oh, there's so much. I thought I had it kind of together. Um, we got two new sponsor deals worth a whopping 60K. Yeah. 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 And then this one is ending the main kit. So I'm hoping, actually, going into next season, if we've made like a run in the Champions League and or Europa League again, maybe we can get a better main kit sponsorship deal. Right? 60K just seems poor. Um, we are the top reputation club in Ireland, which is, yes, come on, boys. Um, oh, boy. The board wants us to win the league. If we go to board and competition performance, look at all this. They literally don't care about any of the cups except for the Iron Brew Cup. They want us to get to the third round. I'm not sure what round we start in. Oh, well, this is the final. Um... Okay, well, last season, let's take a look. That was down here somewhere, quarterfinal. I think we no, we started in the second round. So essentially, they want us to win our first game of, assuming we start in the second round, of the Iron Brew Cup, and they want us to win the league, and they literally don't care about anything else. It's like, like it wasn't even an option to discuss. They were like, doesn't, doesn't care, doesn't care, doesn't care. Um, the only thing that I could change was because obviously they wanted me to win the league and there was no negotiating that. It wasn't like, you know, finishing the top four or whatever. Um, and then Iron Brew Cup, I could make it the quarterfinal. And I was like, you know, what? I think winning the league is, is a high enough bar. Let's just focus on that. <laughs> um, the chairman said, or, uh, is it chairman? I can't remember what we have. Members. Yes, the chairman said he would be open to selling the club. That makes me nervous. Just being honest with you. Um, I gave, on accident, normal prize money for the boys, for the Cups and the League, and for Continental Competition. I was going to leave the first two as normal, but I was going to do high on the Continental Competition to see if like we could make a run. But like I clicked the button, and then I came back, and then it was all on normal again, and I just instinctively clicked confirm. So 
We'll have to see how that goes. Um, we are four to one odds to win the title. Uh, behind us, Cork City five to one, Shamrock six to one, Dundalk seven to one. It goes like twelve to one after that. So those are kind of your favorites. Um, let's look here. Frank has signed a new contract. We've signed some players. He signed a new contract through 2027. It has a 700,000 euro release cost. That's about double his value. Makes me nervous because Excelsior um, in the Netherlands is interested in him. It, it was majored, so that it's dropped. That's good. Now, I did look. They've not spent more than like 250,000 euros in the last several years, so I'm hoping the 700 grand kind of kind of rules that out. We've also uh, made Frank – I mean, he was our captain already. We have sent him on a leadership course which I have literally never done in Football Manager. But what it does is it stops the additional focus training and any individual training you had them working on. It just kills that. And I did it because, well, he's our captain. He's already a 15. So it's not like he really desperately needs more of that, but he's 19 determination. I'm like, I'm just kind of interested to see what happens. So like, does he become a 16, 17, 18? Like what happens? I want to keep him happy and around. Like at the end of the season, we are, you know, before we get to January of 2027, we are going to author him another contract and we're going to give him a raise and we're hopefully going to get rid of the buyout clause. Um, right. Um, so that's, you know, that's exciting. We have had a bunch of changes. Um, first off, we have signed some new staff members. Our assistant manager left. Thanks to take over Shamrock. So that's going to be interesting. We kind of have like a uh, team, you know, I mean, he was with us a long time. I wish him the best, I suppose. You know, it was, it was fine for him, time for him to leave the nest, but that has meant some changes. So in system manager, we got Martin Farley coming from, uh, you know, being without a job for a year. Um, but from Chippenham town, maybe six months, who knows? Um, prior to that unknown, under 18, he did, who knows when he started? He's 51. He's been with Chester before that. All around, about as good as you could find. He's got a Continental Pro. He's balanced, and I like his attributes overall. Decent enough, I suppose, and he was relatively inexpensive. Um, we've re-signed uh, Declan Heavy. Heavy, maybe, is how you say that. Um, he looks quite good. He's professional. Quite the fan of Declan. Um, Derek Geary's signed a new deal. I mean, look at the, you can tell that's why this is all glowing yellow. We have got the best staff by far. Look at the average, right? You see the gray bars here. This is the down here. This is the average, um, like right next to that. We are so far above the average. It's almost hilarious. We've signed Sam Ricketts 900 a week. Now he kind of lucked out because this is after the board came to me and said, do you think we should uh, increase the wages for our coaching staff? And we'd already, you know, started on training facilities. And I was like, yeah, sure. Just so we can, there have been some times in the past where that has been a problem where I couldn't offer a really good coach. And so he comes in after he's like, I want 900 a week. Cause he's coming from Plymouth. And before that Wrexham. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and the only reason I really did it is he's 19. Like he is now our, our, one of our two attacking coaches, but 19 and 18. Right. So, in terms of, I can't remember if that's the technical or the, I, oh, he, I bet it's the tactical. <laughs> um, 19 and 18 is unbelievable. And 19 and 11 is, you know, not half bad. But he's great at motivating. Like, all the mental stuff is really good. He's fairly professional. I think he's a great pickup. Um, let's see. Make sure we didn't drop anybody here. John Mackey we've signed again. Yeah, we've extended him. He's cheap. He This might be his last run with us. I mean, he's cheap. I like that he's determined, but is is not as good as you know. It's kind of funny. Like two seasons ago, it was like that's amazing, and now it's like, well, we're we're big time at it now. We signed Ruben Braja. He's a Spanish coach. Um, was the CA Osasuna under 19s coach, but he finished doing or manager. He finished, and you know we signed him. Kind of an interesting right background, right? Like he's. In real life, it was the U19, ooh, ooh, don't say that, under-19 manager for Valencia. Then he went to Elche, maybe, which is in the Segunda Division B, Grupo 3. And then he went to Rio Valenciano de Madrid, which is in La Liga 2, uh, maybe, 2. 
Um, but he was a manager. And then Real Sporting de, I don't know how to say that, Gion, maybe? Or is it Gijon? I think the J is a unit. But anyway, um, that's a, like a real team. Like, that's a La Liga manager, right? Like, right? They're in the, I mean, they've been there the whole time. It's not like they got relegated. I mean, okay, it's 2017-2020. Yeah, like, he got them promoted, and then he left. And then he becomes an under-19 manager after, like, three seasons of sitting out and nobody wanting him. And then he finished there, and, like, he popped up, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. He's resolute, got really good. I mean, he's not a fitness coach. Okay, great. Everything else, really good. 500 a week? Uh, yeah. And two-star reputation? I know that was a long time on one coach. I was just kind of excited about him, if you can't tell. Um, yeah, this has been our fitness coach. He's quite good. Resolute. Loving that. This is, um, yep. Yep. We've had him been mate. Yeah, of course. I knew that. Um, this has been our longtime goalkeeping coach. He's kind of like the first one to really give us a chance that was of decent quality. And next to him, we have a new one, Ryan Macarness, who was, I mean, going back, right? A uh, Riska player, interesting. Newport County youth coach. Then he played for Riska, which is a d Welsh. I mean, that's interesting. Um, hmm. uh, then he had five years away from football, apparently, and then he got back into being a goalkeeping coach. Newport County, Cinderford, and Brackley Town. Everybody knows. That. I mean, Brackley Town. He was there for like seven years in the Vanarama National League North. They've made quite the run. I'm sure there's somebody, somebody out there watching this video knows what what's up with that. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it, my friends. So, yeah, that's uh, that's three, four new coaches. We have the best coaching staff. I'm really struggling to find scouts of any worth, like, anything worthwhile, to be completely honest with you. Like, we just signed this guy because he knows Africa, and he's working, apparently, on the United States. Um, he was a player up until three years ago. But 12, 9, and 8 is, like, the best scout attributes I can find in Ireland. Like, I've, I've got some other ones, right? Like, 10, 8, and 8. And they're not, like, improving, which I don't know if that's a thing. 14, 7, and 8. Now, that's Marty Waters. Marty freaking Waters. That's it, my friends. Marty Waters on staff. I can't remember if I ever shared that with you. Surely I did. Paul Dutton, 17, 9, and 11. Ooh, you know, you're amazing, Paul. Des Chambers, 12, 14, and 13 is, like, the scout we've had since the beginning and like no one close, nobody close has come. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And our, our chief scout that we signed back in 2019, 15, 16 and 15. So aside from those, like literally those two scouts, everyone else is garbage. I mean, in, in contrast, right? Like there's nobody with like 12s and 13s available in the market. They don't apply. I don't do the whole, like go do a, you know, random staff search and just find people that, you know, you just randomly know from in the game. I want them to apply. Like, we have a standardized process here at Cabin Teeley. You have to apply. That's how it works. Um, right. That was a lot about the staff. Okay. Um, right. Let's go look at the transfers. First off, we have signed Gary Hayes Ward to a three year extension, my friends. Key player, 1.1K a week, absolutely all day long. I don't even think I negotiated the offer. His agent came back and was like, I want this. I was like, done. Like, just done. If you're not going to argue about it, you want to sign a deal for another three years when you're going to be 27? Sure. Works for me. Fair, I mean, mm, he's so good. Um, Kelvin Bello has signed a professional contract. 300 a week, up from 35 a week. I figured he was worth it. I figured he was quite worth it, my friends. He's um, got an assist on a 7.6 in the Senior Cup. He scored a goal as a sub in the President of Ireland's Cup. He scored a goal and a start in the Iron Brew Cup. He's doing quite well, my friends. He's quite tasty. Concentration is concerned. I would, I would love your suggestions. If you know how to get a player's concentration up, that would help not only Kelvin Bello, but also Gavin Wilkinson, who's a four, which is really shocking. Really shocking. Like, that's not a training facilities thing, is it? But uh, anyway, Dean Doyle has signed a new deal. 350 weeks, still on a hot prospect contract, three-year extension. Loving it. He's continued to improve. Oh, he's on a 9.1. That's a Champions League, like the whatever, the first one. Um, 
but a 7.4 in the Leinster Senior Cup and an 8.6 in the President of Ireland's Cup and a 7.4 in the Iron Brew Cup. I'm just saying, I think he's good. I think he's quite good. Um, Harry White with a w, uh, with a with a W ha with a Y. Um, it's also signed a new, an extension. Again, I I wanted to. Sign, I don't typically sign players to extensions until like six months out, but they seemed very like sure, like whatever you want to offer me, right? Like they weren't asking for like I was afraid he was gonna go from like whatever it was eight fifty to like one point six k, and he was like, no, no, you want to just give me a slight bump? I'll sign for three years. I was like, done. All th all four of those. I was like, absolutely. Let's lock it up. Um, we have signed my friends Malo. That's it. We've signed him. He wraps up in June with them, and he comes right to us. It is going to be delicious. 1.8K a week, three-year deal. By that point, two-and-a-half-year deal. But we've got him on loan right now. We're paying half of that right now, so um, that's – oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, and, and I'm sure you're, like, looking here at some of the names. Let's just go to the transfer screen. Yeah. Mm, so excited. So, uh, let, maybe you want to know about the loans, but most of you, I'm assuming, are going to want to know about the new signings. First off, um, we did get the... I, I saw several of you comments saying you need a right winger. We have signed Matthew Witty because he's witty, and I couldn't think of a good witty response to give you, but I'm sure at some point in the season we'll get that. Um, three and a half star, he kind of reminds me of Thompson, right? Like he, It's not like all of his technical attributes are amazing or all of his mental attributes are amazing, but he's quite good. He's like obviously the best right winger. Like, look at that. Look at our right wingers. Like, that is unbelievable. Um, and being 21, he, he, I was able to get him to do a backup contract because I don't want to lock in on a formation that has one or two wingers. I want to have the option to roll people in how we want. So he, he, ha I had to give him a little bit more money, but he, he was like, okay, that's fine. Um, as you can see, one footed needs to become more clinical in front of goal, blah, blah, blah. But you know, could improve a lot in the future. He's got some potential and he's 20. One of my friends picking him up from Limerick. I know, I know Limerick fan in the comments. Maybe I think you should be happy. Now they let him go on a free, like his contract was ending. So that's on them. But I, you know, part of this building a nation series, and this is some of the comments I got. You guys were like, why would you go to England? I was thinking, well, if I could, if I could overpay for players from Ireland, would that long term help? the clubs in Ireland because then they could build facilities or would they even bother doing that? So you you guys were like, do not do that. But you know, if we could share the love, we will. So we're going to pay for players. If we can, we've signed Sean Flynn. We've given him 50 K. Um, he's worth 62 K. It was kind of a, a little bit more than he was worth. I think he was worth like 38 or 40 K, but I want to like make sure I think there was some other interest. I can't remember who it was from currently two and a half star has a potential huh, i love the you know it could be three and a half could be four and a half star kind of a big difference but he's 19 um 400 a week hot prospect and when you look at him he's our third best center back very brave um could improve a lot in the future so i, I love that the report is from the goalkeeping coach why would why would i care about that how about a defensive coach yeah yeah anybody um so he's not perfect. I'd like his acceleration to go up a little bit. You can't really do much about the natural fitness, but he's he was a worthwhile signing, I feel, um, especially for a 19-year-old. So we want to keep him and like give him enough exposure, but he's also not going to be demanding like all this playing time. We have signed another right back, Archer Kadriu from Burton Albion for 29k. Um, I think we got a bit of a deal, lads. He's worth 130 grand. Now, maybe that has something to do. We've signed him to a two-year deal at 1.1K. That's essentially the value of his contract. Um, and when you look at him, like, oh, he's about the same. But, like, he he is better um, than DeJed Spence and uh, Gary Martin. We have uh, loaned out Gary Martin because of this. Um, but he is better. He's got really good physicals, really good mentals, aside from the determination. Technicals are about the same as what we had. And he's five foot seven, so that you know that's the only thing that's a little nervy is we do have some short center backs or uh, our fullbacks, wingbacks, non center back defenders that aren't goalkeepers is another way of saying it. But I think he's a good value, um, you know, considering we paid twenty nine k, he's worth one hundred thirty. Just that alone, I think, says he's that was good value, right? Um, before that, he was with uh huh, yep, and then Dundee, um, Hibernian. He, he, 
I'd like to know the story of how he got from Kosovo straight into um, Hibernian, Hibernians. Uh, is that like you set up would be my guess? That's just very interesting to me. Like he has a very interesting career. So, all right. Welcome in. Welcome in, Arthur. Uh, please do a job. Then we have signed for 250 grand, which I'm sure you were sitting the whole time going like, why don't you show us the 250 grand guy? Gary Gleason. I've had my eye on him for a couple seasons and they've still, they've wanted insane money. Like it's like the, you know, when he's under a certain age and you have to pay compensation or whatever. He was unhappy and wanted to leave because like the manager had broken too many promises. And so I started making offers and they wanted to negotiate. And then it said like, Gary will become unsettled if he's not allowed to talk to Kevin Tila. And I was like, Ooh. And so we were able to work it out. Now you could say his value is 235. We're paying him on a three year deal. 1k a week might have overpaid a little bit, but he's 23. I think he's worth it. He, we didn't have anybody that could play at attacking midfield, right? Like, Malo Lane, our striker, is the second best option, and Ethan Galbraith is the third. But he's a leading player for most Premier League sides, potential to be a star player in the future, can be wayward when crossing the ball. Well, okay, he plays in the middle, and a peripheral figure in the squad. So we got to work on that a little bit. Um, I've been trying to play him in a trecartista role, and it's not gone supremely well because I don't want to use him as an advanced playmaker. I want to try and use, if you've got really good physical stats, you know, we could play like a shadow striker, I guess. Maybe, maybe that's an option. Uh, or an on goal. But as you can see, he's got to start with a, with a 6.2. And you're like, wait a minute. You sign an attacking midfielder. Your formation doesn't have attacking midfielders. That's why I, I, I like to change things up. And here's my thinking, okay? My thinking is, last season... Oh, hello. We played this, right? Which is pretty defensive, right? You got, it's essentially a 4-4-2, but no wingers, right? You're, you get a DM in the spot. And it worked. But my fear this season is, right, we, we won the league. We made a run in the Europa League. I'm afraid teams are going to start to, like, play us differently, right? So, like, against, like, the, if we're up against whoever uh shamrock rovers or whoever is like i guess waterford at this point that looks really good we'll play this right play our game this is what we're gonna do but i wanted to have an option um to be just slightly more attacking and if and if we rotate somebody else in maybe playing a four three one two to where we can utilize our wing backs like attacking wing backs that's why i've got davies on attack this guy I would do on attack. He's got really good physicals, but the the flair is an issue a little bit, is my guess. I you know, I could be I could be convinced otherwise. So I wanted to get us another attacking player further forward and then kind of rely on those wing backs to run the run on the on the on the on the, the side. The the side of the formation, if I could get words out. So we'll have to I mean, thus far, that's this season. I mean last season. It's gone pretty well, right? You know, not bad. We beat Stranraer, the League 2 side, um, in the Umbru Cup semifinal. So we've made it to the final of that competition. We drew with Sligo, so that was our draw. That was what was disappointing. It's like, ooh, okay, now I'm getting a little worried. And then you can argue, okay, President's Cup, maybe Cork City doesn't care about it. Dundalk, maybe it's, you know, it's the Leinster Senior Cup. Maybe their board don't care about it. They did have a sending off. I looked at Kyle Lawless. We were going to sign him. Maybe it was frustrated we didn't sign him, and he, he stepped on a guy. And, uh, well, he was, he was out. Um, so they still scored two goals after, uh, after that, both of them kind of off of set pieces. One of them the goalkeeper's fault. The other one was just a good set piece, but we came through it. But again, it's, it's not league play. So, I mean, it looks like it is going pretty well, but you know, these games are the very start of preseason. These are what, what this is the Alti boys from, uh, you know, uh, Loki Doki safe. Um, the Evostick League Premier Division, yeah, yeah. So not exactly, you know, amazing competition. Although, you know, championship side, you could argue. I mean, I don't know what level. I'm gonna look, aren't I? I gotta click on the correct thing, don't I? Yes, the championship. Yeah. Okay, that's way down there. That is. I didn't realize it was that far down there. My goodness, two hundred and thirtieth. Okay, never mind. So, you know, you kind of take these results with a grain of salt, I guess, is my point. Bray's back up, you know, 
enjoy. Um, so, you know, what this also allows us to do is, like, if we have to drop a striker, we do have both wingers we can bring. We play 4-2-3-1, you know. Um, like, drop the striker, bring the, you know, drop the DM, as it were. So, I'm just trying to, like, playing the same thing for so many games, I just don't want it to get dull and boring for me. I want to try some new stuff out, and I'm, I am afraid that they're going to kind of park the bus on us. Maybe, maybe playing this way forces them to come at us, and then that's why we were scoring goals. I don't know. Um, we'll have to just see how it goes, but we signed him. He's on a rotation contract, so it's not like he's expecting to play every game, but he is one of our better players, and I thought, hey, let's let's roll him out there. So that's the ins. In terms of the outs, we have loaned Matt Capper to Athlone Town. Um, he's improving physically. I'd like a little bit more on the technical and mental, but at least the physicals, are, I mean, maybe he's just, you know, hitting a growth spurt because he's 19, so maybe this has nothing to do with his playing time, but they are starting him two games, and he's on a 6.5. Ignore that. Um, Jamie Clark has left on a free, so we did have some youth players leave. Johnny Doherty just wasn't going to make it. He's left on a free to Athlone Town as well. Uh, Drach Walsh has gone to Marachen Kavan. That's how you say it. Uh, Josh Collins has gone on loan to Waterford. That's he's obviously with his two subs. Even though he's on a key player loan, that's obviously why they're top of the table. I mean, clearly, I'm a little upset about that. Not gonna lie. I'm like, hey, what's the deal? And I've looked. The players that they're playing aren't. I mean, they're they're close, but they're not as good as him. So maybe he's got to like ease his way into the squad. I don't know. We've loaned Tom Caffrey. That looks pretty good. Our midfield prospect, 17 years old, just because we've got enough midfielders now. And if we change the formation a little bit, we don't have four midfielders or three with a DM, right? So I said, hey, I think the most important thing for him is going to be playing time. Last season, he only had three starts, three subs. That's not worth keeping him around. I am trying to be better. I know the comments are always like, your squad sizes are too big. You have too many people in this in the first team. Arr. Um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to loan people out. So this would indicate good things. Now it's early days. Obviously he's only had two starts. Well, you know, okay. You did have a cup start as well. Um, as I mentioned, we've loaned Gary Martin to Shamrock Rovers. It's a backup contract, which I was gutted about. Nobody, I, I offered him out for free. I offered him out for 50% weight. I tried everything. I offered him out a rotation contract with free and nobody, like the only club that was interested in him for a loan was Shamrock. Cork City wanted a transfer. I didn't want to sell him necessarily. Um, it's amazing that you'd be six foot two with a three on heading. That's just amazing to me. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. I'm a little worried he's not going to get the playing time because he's a backup player. But we kind of had people coming in for our right backs and he was the lesser of the two. So off he goes. And we have loaned out Thorgeter Eriksson back to... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This team, um, feel cure. Yep, that's how you say it. Um, just because I've decided to keep Kelvin Bellow around and he needs game time. I like him. I like him as a player. He played well for us last season. I have no qualms with him whatsoever. Eight starts, six subs, four goals on a 696. Nine starts with six goals on a 751 in cup competitions. A start and two subs on an 8.3 in continental competitions. I think he's quite good. He's worth 195K. So we're not going to just let him sit out there and do nothing. So they have signed him on a first team contract. Um, he's already got one start with a goal on a 7.4. Their league is about 20 places below in the rankings than ours. So he should be able to go in there and just smash some people's faces. So that's what we're going to hope is going to happen. Um... Let's see. Uh, Madden retired, but like it, like he retired as a player and became a coach. But then he wasn't nearly worth keeping around. Sadly, once we've you know, like I think we got some people's attention in continental Europe, and they're like, oh yeah, let, I'll go be a coach over there. So we let him go. Um, Harry White with an I and Frank Edich um, are both in the odds for both top player and top young player. Gary Hayes Ward and Gavin Wilkinson are in the running for top goal scorer. Um, what was odd here? DeJed Spence signed a backup contract with us. Okay, let's take a look at when that was. May? Okay. Signed a backup contract with us. And, and maybe it's because we started him 23 games, right? On a 7-2-6. He did quite well. Um, it said he was worried about being replaced by... Arthur. Well, I'm like, well, you signed a backup contract, but maybe it has something to do with that the fact that we played him as the starter last season, despite he was on a backup contract. But I'm just kind of like, that's a bit odd. Um, our average attendance last year was 2,094. It's a club record, which strangely enough, 
was the highest since 2022. And I thought that was a bit odd. Because, okay, last season, I get it. We made a run in the Europa League. That's going to, you know, we had a Continental or uh, Champions League run, and then we got bumped to the Europa League. We got to the group stage. That's going to bring in more fans. Okay, I get that. I know we didn't win the league this season, and so, you know, we didn't, or, or we didn't even have, was that the season where we didn't even have um, Europa League, right? So 2024, we wouldn't have had Europa League because of where we finished, I think, is what happened. But here, right, we're in the Europa League, so you'd think in this season we would have had higher attendances. I don't know. I just thought it was a bit strange that like we've we've made other continental competitions before, but it took f four years for us to break the record. I was like, what the heck? Um, as you can see, the Premier Division or Premier League has gone from forty fourth to forty third to forty fourth to forty second, and now to forty first. We are developing. It's all us. It's all us. Don't tell anybody. Um, from an Ireland standpoint, how long am I been recording? Okay, <laughs> it's thirty minutes. Um, from an Ireland standpoint. Injury City, my friends, and those of you that said that don't worry until somebody is like 22 or 24 before they'll switch, you are 100% wrong, and I am not happy with you. Uh, really, there's nothing we could do because it was a World Cup year, but we have lost so many players, it's not even funny. But look at this. Martin O'Neill, what's he got? Pulled groin. Michael Duffy, what's he got? Groin strain. Connor Kelly, what's he got? Uh, he's on the disabled list. He's got a lower back stress fracture. Six more weeks. Connor Masterson, out for seven months. Four to seven months with ligament damage. Oh, he's kind of like the next Shane Duffy. I kind of need Connor to be, you know, not dead. Um, Adam Ida, lower back stress fracture. What is with the lower... Do they not... Like, is there not enough milk in Ireland? You know, good for your bones. I'm just saying... Troy Parrott, broken lower leg. He's got four months left. Obviously, it was longer than that. It's just like, oh. And that's not good because he's with Tottenham. I mean, he's on a long-term deal. So, but like, you know, when you go out with a broken leg, you got to get your fitness back and then earn your way back into the team. It's just like, oh, my goodness. Um, Michael Moore, who I can't remember. He may have already told us he doesn't want, us, want to represent us, but he's not to England yet. So, I... I've essentially gone, okay, this is a UEFA Nations League year, and we have got a bunch of players we need to try and cap tie. Um, like Obafemi and uh, Giguri, or whatever his name is, that we we thought we cap tied, and it turns out we didn't. Um, Michael Moore, Jimmy McGrath, I think. Oh, wait, Jimmy might actually have. No, no, he's not. So, like, we have so much work to do. From this side, Ray Mooney looks pretty good, right? But no caps. It says he's only able, eligible for us, which maybe I shouldn't be as worried about that. But I am because he's 23 and he can play anywhere in the back. Uh, Philip Carroll is another one. Right back looks pretty good, like especially considering our right back situation. I definitely like anybody that plays right or left back. It, I know it, it. I know he's only eligible here. They're gonna get a call up because, at the very least, I'm hoping the call up helps them propel their careers forward and get better. But and there's been others. Um, let's see if I can find the one. It was a guy named Shane, I think. Oh, I was so mad because he looks so good. But it was like there was literally nothing I could do about it. Um, it wasn't Reese, was it? Nope. He looked really good. Steven Seddon. Oh. He's 17. He wants to rep 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 represent England. I mean, I know, okay, it's England. And you play for West Ham, and they're currently 8th. Okay, I get it. But, you know, he's 17. Like, there's nothing I can do about that now. So... I, whenever I'm coming across somebody that can play, they, they're coming in. Even if it means poor results in the short term. If we're going to build the nation, we have to have players for the nation 
to play. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, my friends. Um, I'm just checking here. I think that's all that I need. Oh, like, yeah, like, you know, we've only been talking for over a half hour. Um, yeah, that's all we need to talk about. So, our, um, not that schedule. Schedule. Um, I'm going to bring you back for the Iron Brew Cup final because, of course, I am because we're playing Wraith, right? Neutral site opportunity to get another trophy for the lads. We'll have to see how the league is shaping up because we got one, two, three, four games before then. Will we be top of the table? Let me know. I'm going to bring this back to the transfer screen. This one. Let me know what you think of the signings or signings and the outs. What are your thoughts there? What do you think about the formation change? We'll love your thoughts on that as well. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Thank you.